Yeah. So the finer things in life, what are the finer things in life? According to you? Sleep. What else? Spring water. You can name as many as you want. Magnesium glycinate. Mm-hmm. AMG. Mm-hmm. The Swiss Alps. Okay. Skydiving. Sick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. My answer is a little different. What is it? My answer is more like... Oh. Slowing down time to appreciate little things like cleaning your car. Slowing down time to appreciate things like the work you do. I'm obsessed with time right now. And I feel like you can kind of control it, right? You know how there's certain days where it's just really long? Other days where it's really long, but it went by quick? Yeah. And there's days where you're extremely content with every single period of your day. And you're like, what the hell is going on? Like, why is it different days? Time isn't flying, but time can fly. Hmm. Time is just going. Is this something we're doing that is making us this obsessive with figuring out the truth or the truth about time, the, the truth about, no, not the truth of life, <laughs> the truth of whatever it is, you know, this whole competition we call being alive. How do we go from time to the truth of life? Because time is a part of life. It's a big jump, bro. Right. It's a very big jump. No, it's not a big jump. What do you mean? What is it? A leap? It's not that it far is a leap. leap. No, we went from time because time is a part of life, is it not? It's just one aspect of it. It is. Okay. But then you went to the purpose of life. Did you not? Kind of. <laughs> How am I supposed to say What is going this? on? But anyway, Toy Story. Oh. <laughs> oh. What do I do? I stumbled upon a video that I actually saved just to show you. Um, where is it at? It's right here. So this guy always walks into his dad's office and he tells him, like he asks him a question. And it's usually to rattle his cages, and he just goes off on a rant for like three minutes, okay? So this is it. What do you think about student loans? Oh, the, the ones that they're going to forgive? Is that what you're talking about? You just come in here to piss me off? What is this world coming to? Nobody wants to take responsibility for any of their actions. You take a loan out, you pay it back. How fucking hard is that? I mean, it's ridiculous. I was talking to a girl about this topic. She says... I have a master's degree and I can't find a job. It's not my fault. It's the society's fault. It's America's fault. I shouldn't have to pay back my student loans. And I was like, wow, you're having a hard time finding a job in this market? What's your degree in? She said, liberal arts. I said, well, there's your fucking problem. Why don't you take uh, art history as a major? Why don't you take another completely useless educational degree that you're going to go to school for, what, six years for to get a master's in liberal arts? What the fuck are you going to do with that? Why don't you go take a class that you could do something with? I don't know, become a doctor, maybe an engineer, maybe a scientist, maybe something else the world could use. I think we have enough lawyers, and I think we have enough liberal arts majors. And now you don't want to pay back your student loan? Now the government's just going to, like, make them all go away so that I have to pay for it? A guy like me, who couldn't afford to go to college, who had no opportunity to go to college whatsoever, who didn't even fucking graduate high school, and I made something of myself. Do you know why? Because I'm a goddamn hard worker, that's why. I'm not going to look for somebody else to pay off my shit just because, ah, I don't want to work. And that same girl, by the way, driving a nice new car, nice iPhone 13 Pro Max, living in a great, beautiful place, can't find a job. Get the fuck out of here. Jesus. <laughs> God damn, bro. This guy's okay. I mean, he, he's right on a lot of things. Yeah, he's a, he's right on a lot. It's obviously like he's pissed about it because you can tell he's been on a, like probably a long journey. Yeah. You know, he's an older dude. He's not really that young, but. Yeah, but student loans are a complete racket. Mm -hmm. They are. But like, First, yeah. Forgiveness. I don't know. Like, no, you, you think you've got to take responsibility for taking out a loan. But then again, like these loans are given to people who are 18 years old mm -hmm. and you don't know shit about the world at 18. That's true. Are you going to make a wise decision at 18 years old? Fuck off. Yeah. But I, I like, for example, I came from like a normal home where my dad was there. Like he's like, yeah. well, let me see this. Right. So even if you're 18, if you come from a broken home, I understand like you're just on your own. You're just doing this. You're not really consulting your parents for this. But like at 18, I was still asking questions. Like I wasn't stupid. 
I wasn't uh, stupid enough well, to get a liberal arts degree at 18. <laughs> ye- you were stupid in the sense that you haven't discovered like what you're capable of yet. Sure. Right. Yeah. So in that sense, that's why you never stop asking questions. You just run to someone and be like, Hey, what do you think of this? A mm-hmm. student loan before you're at the bank. <laughs> Not just, yo, sign here. Let me call my dad real quick. hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. Right. And the interest rate is more insane because it just gets higher and higher every year. Pretty much. And they, I think are, for some. they will never be forgiven. <sighs> And uh, can't file bankruptcy on those. Yeah. And that's that's the thing about life is that it sucks. Once you sign, you are completely responsible for it. Well, or you could just leave so the you country. Made, it sounds like you made the wrong decision. You could just leave the country and live somewhere way better with a better quality of life and just never come back to the U.S. That's a possibility. That is true. But you might have to revoke your citizenship, I think. Who cares? <sighs> I think it's deeper than that, dude. <laughs> like, who cares, really? Like, I, it, it really, it's that's tough. I mean, a hundred thousand dollars. What's the interest on a hundred thousand dollar loan over the course of years? I I would imagine it's like you're, 20, you're essentially 24%. taking out another one hundred thousand dollar loan. Is it? Just it's something in, incredible like that. It's like amazing how. So we're basically, talking about like you're, upwards thirty six percent. Then you're taking out two loans. Yeah. Because you took out the original loan, but you add interest onto it. Also depends on the type of loan, but like, like these people will be paying off their loan, and the nu- the number they owe keeps going up. Yeah, yeah, that's, how that's what I'm it saying. Is. Like every month, you're not paying down; you're paying up. Mm-hmm. It's so weird, and it, it it's crazy. Uh, I know one of my friends actually, when he graduated, became an engineer. He vowed that he's not going to do anything with his money right now. He's just going to pay off his debt. That's it. And that's what he did. A year and a half, paid it all off. Yeah, that's a smart option. And then he's like, oh, I can live. Now we start saving. Like, okay, cool. You know, that's one option. Yeah. But a lot of us, I think, are just too quick to just like, um, you. it comes from like, you don't want the burden of thinking about the responsibility because it's so huge that you'd rather just leave it there for years and years and years and you'd get depressed about it. And... You would you would just do things like focus on the short term, which is like the daily life, right? Yeah. So you'll get the nice car and you'll you'll do things to make you feel like, you know, you're filling some sort of gap. But you're not. You just put it on a firm. You saw the debt. Pay a monthly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like I'll don't run away from it. Yeah. Don't run away from it. It's crazy. Um I was at the Newport Library and every once in a while I like popping in there and just uh checking out like a book. So I'll either go to the philosophy side, religion side, world history, that kind of stuff, and just browse. The first thing I that catches my eye, I'll usually just read like the first 13, 15 pages of it and decide whether I want to buy it or not, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if someone's asking why the hell didn't I just check it out, it's because the library's far as hell. I'm not going to be there every day, so I don't want to <laughs> commit to, uh, you know, another act of responsibility. So. Yeah, just buy it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was about, it was a book called Humility. Interesting, right? Out of a million books that I was looking at, I see this thing that says humility, and I'm like, just humility. Very interesting. Do not recall. I do not recall, to be honest. Hmm. But uh, the intro of the book started off by uh, talking about a woman, okay, and uh, she was at a ceremony, and I think this this woman was really popular in the '60s, and uh, I think they were at the ball, and she had just finished like her custom dress, so she was walking down the aisle, and whatever. And the reason why she was popular, according to this book, was because she just had like this very humble act of kindness. You can see it in her eyes, in her smile, in her motion, the way she talks to people, her relationships, like things like that. And people were like, "These are all wonderful." Like the author was saying, "These are wonderful things to take note of." Yeah. And, um, the writer was talking about an interviewer that went up to her and said, and kind of just went uh, over the whole like questioning. So she actually got in touch with this lady at the ball and she asked her like, um, basically your aura or your vibe is just very, um, down to earth. Like I want, it's attractive. Like, what is it? And she said, it's the absence of arrogance. I leave arrogance at home. Hmm. Like that kind of thing. 
And that was for the intro of the book. That was that was where it ended. It was just like it left you to think with that. Like, what is That's the absence just of like arrogance? A perfect beginning, yeah. Perfect yeah. Intro. Um, and it, it really got me to think about like, yo, everything we see today, whether it's in the media or your friends or friends of friends, people in public, people at Target, Walmart, whatever, right? Part of your daily life, whether you like it or not. Um. Everything that you might pick at and be like judging at, you know, like this is wrong. That's wrong. I don't understand this. Why are they doing this? Why do they look like that? Why are they wearing this? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Goes back to that feeling. I think that shame or, or that humility. Right. Because we keep crossing borders with this stuff. Like there's new. Um, the threshold is, is rising higher and higher. It's just growing with mm -hmm. this, uh, the absence of, of that emotion, I would say. Just based off our role models in life. So to, to a lot of young women, right? Cardi B was a huge inspiration for like, for like two years straight. Which is you shocking. Remember that? It's shocking. Yeah. For a guy to see that, you're like, what? I might as well praise Johnny Sins at this point. <laughs> you know? Like if that's your role model... We have uh, some complications here. We have some some things we need to talk about. You know, like <laughs> we have some traumas to to heal. Yeah. And who's to say if it's right or wrong? You know that like how much humility we actually need as human beings to have like a functioning kind of environment. You know, like a healthy functioning environment. Yeah. Well, it's different for each person. Yeah. But it, but I think my main point is that it's near it's near bottom at this point. The level of humility that we uh, we have as like I think a collective, um, missing, totally missing. Why do you think that is? It's the strong magnet that like that either the government or life kind of sets up for you so the main event or the main focus depending on the decade is usually always different so for yeah. a time we did focus on like these like bill gates i remember the last decade his name was popping up everywhere it was like all about tech it was all about this this that like new microsoft things intel's doing crazy stuff you that's the kind of stuff you see nowadays it's more like the next presidency, who's running up, Kanye wants to run. And it's like, it's a mixture of like, you're seeing a whole different kind of uh, section of known people, right? So now we're visiting like the entertainment. We had Trump as a president, bro. <laughs> like, think about that. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's it all about attention. A, it's a popularity like, contest. Yeah. Uh, seeing him live was like going to a stand-up comedy show, pretty much. You know, you're waiting for him. no. No, you know, like, no, <laughs> like just that's yeah, one of the, that's one of the messed up things that social media does to a generation. It makes you blind. Inflated ego. It's blind, bro. It's yeah. blind. You know what invisible ink is? No. It's a pen that you could just buy. It's invisible ink. You could just write on a piece of paper and it has a, an, um, UV light. Infra yeah. UV light on the back. And that's how you can see it. Mm. Social media or like, okay, the, the distracting things in life is the invisible ink. Like imagine drawing a whole window over your, your peripheral vision or your, your reality. Yeah. Okay. And once you actually dig into it and start thinking, like what's truly happening? Why did I feel a certain way at 15, 16, 14 years old? And I remember those feelings, but now they're stored in a vault and I can't get to them because I am now this, right? And it's not like I am now this because I'm an adult. It's just, there's something being masked. That's how it feels, right? And this is how, yeah. this is the whole matrix thing that we talk about. It's, it's that shield. Once you see through it, you're like, oh my God, that's what, that's true life. Yeah. That's what it is. Most None of this matters. Facade, like the, the greatest example I can bring up is like, uh, you see a, a couple that looks so happy on social media, but then they're like fucking miserable in real life. Mm -hmm. Always arguing, inverted relationship where the woman is in control and the man's not. It's just like, 
and then they put they put up this like perfect image of their relationship on social mm-hmm. media. I heard the stupidest argument this morning, actually, with that, yeah, uh, like regarding superiority with men and women, something like that. All right, it was a room full of women, and it was a woman asking another woman a question. She was like, uh, "Do you think we need men?" And the this other girl was just like, "No, absolutely not. We're like, we can get away without them." Yeah, She's sure. like, "Okay, what about the the like industrial? What about you know buildings? What about this and that? What about electricity? What about the water system? You know, who's doing the heavy work? It's the men." She's like, "Well, we could figure that out. Yeah, I sure. know people that work as engineers and as this and that, and they're women." And she's like, "Yeah, but the rest of the ninety nine percent are men. Do you understand? Like, what we can't just grow that one percent and just start dominating men. Like, it makes no sense, right?" Yeah. And she's like, okay, what about like offspring? And she's like, well, we're les- we could just be lesbian. Like we just have, you know, we're attracted to other women. You know I'm like, stupid, what? Do you know how stupid we would sound if we were like, yeah, we don't need women. We just need men. That makes no sense, bro. It's, it's so dumb. No it's like, it's like. It's a double digit IQ take. No, no. Get truth away from me. <laughs> you know? What am I spraying raid on a cockroach? What's going on, dude? No. No! I hate raid, by the way. Yeah, raid. That shit is so toxic. I feel you, bro. Anybody who's, who's like, bring out the raid, or we need to buy raid. I'm like, oh what my the god, what the fuck yeah. is wrong with you? And they like, you live in the same sp- yeah. space that you're spraying this. Yeah. And they start like nuclear bomb in. Yeah, and they're like, does it smell good? I'm like, bro, don't sm- don't inhale it. What are you doing? You know, stupid idiot. Might as well be ingesting cyanide. Yeah, unforge, bro, unforge. Unforge. Um. What's it called? Here's Just the this. unfortunate nature. <laughs> so dude. funny. I did not expect this. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to look at some Here, dumb shit. When anybody says, sorry, mom, I'm getting a motorcycle. That thing is sick. You're not getting a motorcycle. Why not? Because I had a friend that fell off and now he's blind and only has one arm. For real? Yeah. Well, no wonder he fell off the motorcycle. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Just guy humor. Yeah, just guy humor. Like, Google when you don't expect it. something like that, you're like, what? I'm going to laugh so hard right now. <laughs> but yeah, um, what was it called? Basically, look, there's... Going back to the whole uh, women thing, I think women having one truly good thing to attract men, which is just their looks, basically... It's really hard to find something great, you know, beyond that. So I had this thought and I had to write it down. Of course, you know me, right? I just have to write things down. Okay. Sometimes I know you. But it's this, this was a shower thought, actually. A shower thought, okay. Yes. And I, I, this is what I said. The easiest, most basic form of convincing is deception. And it starts with makeup. Yeah. Oh, I wrote an extra note. Put example, italics. <laughs> You're like, get your shit together, son. <laughs> All females with caked makeup and fake beliefs that keep changing to replace actual deep matter and substance. Hmm. Think about it. They go through seasons, right? New eyebrow season, new nail season, new this. Sneeko. Oh, the first one didn't. Yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> no, no, but like, funny. not that far, you know? It's cute. It's cute for a girl to take care of herself. You know what I mean? Um, but to like show me that you are one person, right? Don't keep changing. Where it's just like you literally are, you're changing your beliefs almost every summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and it's in regards to like the, the past ones are just failing. So what can I try that's new? And it always has to be with like visual it just always has to be visual right hmm. like hmm look at my i need to get my ass bigger you know i need this new makeup that's going to just i don't know contour my face better well yeah i think that's because women inherently know that the majority of i know but there's a their, big their difference in how works. we think versus how they do yeah <laughs> right like for us we're just like dude i need to get smarter right I need to learn more. I need to, I need to like lead. I need know? to make more money. Maybe my, shit. I think my siblings look up to me. So like, I need to do better on that. You know, 
Obviously, like, it's a generalization. There are a yes. lot of women who think about of course. important matters. Of course, of course. It's a generalization into, I don't mean it like that. I don't think I mean it like that. I think I mean it like more, like an intro to a book. I, real quick, I'm just talking about that real quick. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing, this is not of a deep matter. It's just more like there's a very distinct way of thinking and I can see it. Yeah. So like when we get thoughts, I think our urgency is a lot higher. With what? With physical movement. Which is why I don't believe working from home is actually good for you as a man. No, I, I've come to that conclusion the past it's, five it's months. It's not great. Working at home is the most toxic fucking thing you could ever do. Exactly. You should not be in that environment. We've talked about this before, right? When we get a stew, we're going to have damn right a, a, an editing room. And then we're going to have a studio recording room where literally nothing happens in there except for recording. And then we have yep. our kitchen because that's where the drinks go. We're not going to have... Like Bro. it's just... This, Once you split it up like that, it makes sense, does it not? The single greatest way to depress yourself and to become a piece of shit as a man mm. is to stay at home and work. Yeah. 100%. It, it's, and, and I don't mean like weekend work, but I'm saying if you're like, you, you have like an at home office and that's the only office and you're sitting there and you're working. You stay in there all day. You, you don't even step outside for five minutes. Mm -hmm. that's, which is going to happen. Which if is you're very busy. common. Yeah. If very you're busy, common. it's going to happen. It just... There's a spark in you that wants to ignite and it can't ignite at home. There's something there. I know this because I've experienced it yeah, firsthand, yeah. dude. You I know that I explosiveness. Never, I almost never come down with like negative feelings like over a prolonged period of time. Mm -hmm. But staying at home and fucking working yeah. drives me crazy. The explosive. Now I have like coffee shop down the street. I have to go. Mm -hmm. I have to. Yeah. Do something. 100%. It's a different mindset too. The energy is different. Like yeah. you feel like you're, you're using your energy. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. When you're at home, it's almost like you're compressing it and it's coming out. It's seeping like steam. The energy is just coming out. But when yeah. you go out, it's just like you open the lid. And, Root on and Twitter just, talks, talks about that a lot. It's, it's, it's amazing because I, I understand the, that like it's comfortable, right? But what happens when you're comfortable? You don't do 100% of your job correctly. Right, because then you're missing like a little piece of like the passion. You're mm -hmm. missing a little piece of that. Missing a little piece of that. You're a little too comfortable. Yeah. When you when you introduce the uncomfortable, that's when you shine. That's when like all your things are like, all right, this has to be hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. You're more alert. And you're more willing to take more calls. You're more willing to drive more sales. You're more willing to read more. You're more willing to go to the gym. Actually, now. Yeah. Crazy. It's here's, crazy. Here's a great example. He was, uh, Brute was talking about this perfect example, I think. He was like, never as a, as a man, never leave your fucking fridge completely stocked. You want your fridge to practically be empty. Mm -hmm. So then every day you go to the farmer's market, pick up what you can carry, meet, meet new people, meet new chicks, meet new, uh, you know, connect with other people, come back, eat, leave again. Yeah. This applies home to... Home is just... Home is not where you spend all of your time. It's just a waypoint. It's base. Mm -hmm. It's mid. It's a midpoint. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. It's like um, you spend a lot of time trying to... Like make things efficient. Well, what if I told you efficiency is not the key? I hate the word efficiency because we've talked about this for like the past three years, bro. <laughs> it's positive form laziness. Yeah. If you want to call it that, that's what it is. Sure. Now... I like the word positive, but I hate the word laziness. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just get rid of efficiency? You want some efficiency, but the the over optimization mentality of like I want everything to be streamlined. It's yeah, like no, I I gotta never run out of Dr. Peppers. Get the hell out of here, bro! Like that makes no sense to me. Amazon subscription for Dr. Peppers. It's just stupid, you know. Because <laughs> hmm, because what life are you experiencing if you're at home all day? None. You're on a fucking computer screen all day. You're, you're shutting it down if there's an opportunity. Exactly. You don't know what's happening. This is, which is why it lines up with my, my whole idea of like, when you wake up in the morning, as soon as your eyes are open, that's open up shop. Like you are the business. What is the deal today? Right? Let's get it working. Let's go. So do what you got to do. The best thing in the, in the world, honestly, is to get up early in the morning before everybody because you will see who's outside. It's the elites. Yeah. Right? Go to the coffee shop. Good morning. I'll take a coffee. 
a bagel. All of a sudden, you've done four hours of work, and people just woke up to go to work. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hit the gym, right? You're 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 already you're set, and that that is setting up your mentality with like so much comfort for your brain to start attacking work. And it's like <sighs> waking up in the morning actually sets you up naturally to be more self conscious, to be more aware and appreciative of your surroundings. Yeah, I love going to the beach like within yeah. 20 minutes of waking up. It's next level. Yeah. Bro. So like, it's next level. you know, how, like you have um, your fans where they ask questions on Twitter. They're like, yo, sure. how can I gain more energy for blah, blah, blah. And I don't really like the you, word fans, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, I get you. Whatever. <laughs> Followers, right? You would go and be like, oh, well, you need to get vitamin D, vitamin K12, potassium, blah, blah, blah. Do whatever, whatever you can. B12s are great, right? Okay. Well, the best source is the sun. Go outside. Well, what time are you waking up? 10 a.m.? Well, like, I can't ensure you that the sun will actually give you the happy drug today. Mm -hmm. Because you already messed up by sleeping late and not waking up early. So your body actually has this um, consistency of, like, it knows, it knows the rhythm. It knows when, when it's morning. And when it's morning, it actually provides a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. naturally without you thinking about anything or doing anything drastic yeah think about that i, th I think it like here's how to know you're an ambitious person mm. if you wake up at 10 10 o'clock in the morning and you feel like a piece of shit then you're ambitious i'm a firm believer in that well yeah duh but i mean well, this this is always going to go towards your health in the long run regardless yeah right we know that, but like, we've talked about this. I wouldn't be here if I, w if I didn't wake up at 11 PM every day or 2 PM. Right. Yeah. I'm not talking about the occasional days where you just wake up and it's just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. It's occasional. But to be like, yo, I am not happy. I'm trying to get my happiness or energy back, whatever it is. Right. Some people are like, I have positive thoughts, but I just don't have no motivation. I go to bed from 2 AM to 10 PM and like, yeah, that, there's your fucking problem. Dude. Yeah. I can't guarantee you, like, it'd be like, oh, bullshit, Zade. The sun didn't do anything for me. I'm still depressed. Well, you know, maybe listen to your body. Yeah. Start or you around. just can't be helped if you have that kind of mentality. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be on the internet. Or maybe we shouldn't be on the internet. No, we should right, be on the gonna internet. All right, guys, it's going to be our last episode. <laughs> I'm kidding. Goodbye. <laughs> Dang Never hear from us again. But yeah. Uh interesting life we live in it's very uh complication with uh... there are too many complications <laughs> today yes sir sabah al khair sabah al khair indeed bro i actually like that picture you took of my cat today yeah i'd be that taking pictures so of your funny, bro. pussy every now and then yes sir <laughs> <laughs> my cat my kitty 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 oh man i was gonna to actually call you and be like yo can you pick up some mountain spring water mountain valley why didn't you call me i, don't know. I was just at mother's market sucks i've been like dreaming of them yeah yeah they got me they got back to me with a quote what because they deliver now oh yeah like the wait i think i have it on my one galloners they got back to me as well oh they did what a coincidence hell yeah so 24.99 mm -hmm. for each two and a half gallon glass bottle 30 bucks for each five gallon glass bottle $30 refundable bottle deposit for each full five gallon bottle delivered. Mm. Uh, so you're looking at like $50, $60 a month max. Maybe That's not cheaper. bad. That's a lot of water though. Mountain Valley spring water. You think that's yeah. worth it or just getting the cases? I really, I don't know. I'm not just, I'm not gonna like be one of those fucking people who like cost analyze which one is cheaper like yeah but like what is the difference is I guess I think it's more effective to just go with the five gallons oh yeah 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 for sure I think it, I think so too especially if like you work at home <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know people are like you know why do you go why do you go to the store and buy those glass bottle you know individual spring water things I'm just like, because I want to. Yeah. And because it's, it's easy on the go. Like and it's we, good. It's so good. Yeah. 
I'm not trying to micromanage the fact that I spend 50 cents here or a dollar there. Mm -hmm. Let's get the fuck over it. (laughs) (laughs) Make more money. Yeah. No, no, I get you. But yeah, we are in a uh, recession of a time. It's receding right now. It's crazy. Receding like all these fools' hairlines. Yeah, exactly, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Turkish hairlines. (laughs) (laughs) Bro, that was clever. Yeah. Welcome to, just imagine you're boarding a plane. Welcome to Turkish hairlines. Bing. Where we Welcome to Turkish hairlines. Where we dominate the hotspot region of the world. Can you imagine? I bet you Every I bet you eighty percent of the men who go to Turkey are there just to get hair done. Straight up. Or I've fucking been, hair I, dude, operation. You know, you know this. I've been to Turkey four times now. Okay. Every <laughs> time. The entire airport is just bandaged up, right? <laughs> Looking like war vets, yeah. bro. <laughs> With just swollen faces, bro. They look like peanuts. <laughs> Dude, they're like, yes, I am boarding plane now. You know, I saw that on video for the first time. Somebody who had with the bandages after the operation. I'm like, did, did they hit their head or something? No, no. And just, then I connected the dots. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's what it looks like after you get your hair done. Yeah, and then his wife got a nose job. It's, yeah, it's just kind of like a like a different type of honeymoon. It's pretty amazing, dude. You get <laughs> different type. Of, <laughs> you can grab hair from your back, from your leg, mm-hmm. and then they can do some sort of magic wizardry it's to the point where you have a full head of hair. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's wild. I've seen some terrible dudes, though. Oh yeah, some terrible um, implants. <laughs> Let me search up some. Where it's like it lo- literally looks like armpit hair in the front, and then the rest. Oh, of like, oh hair, dude! It's like, where'd you take that from? Terrible. Your taint. <laughs> Andrew taint. <laughs> Andrew taint. <laughs> terrible hair transplants. Oh man, I feel like I'm gonna just see some awful shit. Yeah, you're gonna, you're about to see this. It's just funny to me. It's not a transplant, is it? No, it just looks like normal balding. I don't know what that is. It looks like a rainbow line across the head, dude. <laughs> Look at this. What the hell is that, dude? <laughs> oh my what god. What in God's name, dude? This guy had a fucking right acute yeah. triangle on his forehead. This is what some people don't understand, even with haircuts, right? Is that you have a head shape. I hope you know this. <laughs> Bro, can you imagine? My God. <laughs> Oh my Can't god! Imagine, bro. Yeah, because, but you get me. People try to force haircuts that just doesn't fit on them. Like what? What's an example? I'm like when example. I get my fade, does that it. fit me? Yeah, yeah. Because you have like a longer whatever. But like, uh, I don't know. Fucking Think of someone awkward that grew out their hair and it just looks terrible. Like you should not have long hair. I can think of a couple people. You think a couple people? Yeah. Yeah. Like, way too long. Like, yeah, they but, never get a haircut. But there's no, like, actual good way to say that, you know? It's just, like, you want to look out for them, almost. You'd be like, yo, dude, I want you to look your best. So. <laughs> yo, dude, you ever thought about getting a fucking haircut? <laughs> yeah. That matches you? Yeah. I mean, it rarely happens, but it'll happen. You'll yeah. you'll catch someone, you'll be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Someone should tell them, but that oh. wouldn't come off clean, so. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. You know, it's really bad when everyone focuses on your, on your haircut. As opposed to just you as a person. Yeah. Everyone's just looking up while you're talking. Yo, my eyes are down here. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you objectifying me? Hello? Yeah, dude. I don't know. I've been in a very chilly mood lately. Not spicy, like chill. <laughs> Chilled out. <laughs> Turkish oh, hairlines, bro. Yeah, Turkish hairlines. We need to make home. a logo. Turkish hairlines. 100%. <laughs> Why not? Dude. Theo Vaughn is one of the funniest people. Oh, hilarious. You listen to his uh, podcast a lot? He's so quick. Yeah, he's quick as hell. Bro, he, he was talking to Joe Rogan on on uh, one of the, the episodes, and he was like, he's like, yeah, dude, you know, with the whole, this whole abortion thing, or like, uh, do you think people are going to come out and say like, uh, people are going to start having protests, and then women are just going to start being like, yeah. Pay for my pussy or whatever. Oh yeah, I remember, remember that you saw too. that. And Joe Rogan's like, <laughs> he's like, no, nah, I'm saying. And Joe Rogan's like, I don't only know fans. what you're saying. They got on OnlyFans, yeah, only fans or like, something. And I'm he's sure. like, he's like, oh man, Jamie, I need some help. Can you pull up some help? <laughs> Jamie, help! <laughs> pull up some help, Jamie. <laughs> that dude is so funny. Yeah, he, the fact that he's just like that as a person. Just he's really got he's got a special type of humor. Yeah, it's mesmerizing, dude. Excuse me. I was trying to search up a video of his. Theo Vaughn. Let me bring up an example. TV. That's the sickest initials. 
drink sometimes, which are like piss magnets. They're delicious, but they make you want to pee. Make you want to beat your wife, too, dude. I've seen a <laughs> lot of dudes drinking Monster. What you the know they're going home to punch. <laughs> they're going oh home to punch. God, damn. <laughs> Bro, I can relate to that. You know what that takes me back to? Kyle. Junior high. The Kyle meme? No, no, not even that. Before a Kyle meme, bro. It was just uh, when the Metal Militia brand was a thing. Do you remember that? No. My God, this was all over Orange County, bro. The hell was a Metal Militia? This was a poppin' brand in Orange County. Metal Militia. All right, you wear, you wear dicky shorts with a studded belt and a Metal Militia shirt and then a monster hat. And you had to have all flavors of monster. It sounds like hell. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, you were 14 at the time. Oh my god, yeah. Right. Okay. So <laughs> experiment. <laughs> it's just <laughs> unique times when I grew up. <laughs> oh yeah. god, bro. But yeah, that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of that kind of Kyle. And then Kyle came along. <laughs> the Kyle me, bro. And it just made too much sense. Too much sense for my liking, you know? <laughs> Speaking of too much sense. Yeah. Do you can go ahead and flay our mignon at the 2 a.m. podcast on oh, Spotify. I didn't expect you to say that. <laughs> Just, you know, make words into verbs. I got that. Just fillet your mignon sometime. All right, guys. If you wanted to fillet your mignon, go ahead and follow us at the 2 a.m. podcast on YouTube at the 2 a.m. podcast and on Spotify. We're also available on every major streaming, streaming platform. So whatever you use, we're available there. Go ahead and follow us there and yeah. we will catch you next time. Adios.